Okay, boys and girls. Today we are talking about using our grouping symbols like parentheses. And we're going to talk about um, how we use those, kind of like we talked about yesterday, and where we put them in our expressions when we're writing them. And we also talked about that yesterday too. So today our main uh, job is just going to be practicing these parentheses. Why do we put them there? Where's the best place to put them? All of that. Okay? So our first one says, Justine is making jewelry for her friends. She makes four of the bracelets that we see in the picture. So we need to look at the picture to help us. To determine the number of beads she needs, she writes the numerical expression 5 plus 3 plus 6 times 4 because she it wants to make four bracelets. So 5, 3, 4, 5, 6, she's got six triangles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, circles, and 1, 2, 3 squares or cubes. So she knows she needs five of those, three of those, and six of those, and she needs that four times in order to make four bracelets. Use the order of operations to evaluate Justine's numerical expression. So, the way that she wrote it. So let's evaluate it or solve it the way she wrote it. So she wrote, 5 plus 3 plus 6 times 4. So if we're using our order of operations, first we should multiply. And 6 times 4 is 24. 5 plus 3 plus 24. Then I can add 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 24 is 32. So I get 32 when I use her expression. B says, which part of her expression models the number of beads she uses for one bracelet? So I know she uses the six, the five, and the three. So five plus three plus six. That's what she used for one bracelet. I can see that in the picture. How can you use your answer from part B to find what she does for four? So if I can figure out what she does for one bracelet, I can figure out what she does for four. So maybe find the sum for one bracelet, five plus three is eight, and eight plus six is 14. And then what could we do to figure out for four? If one of them is 14 beads, then four of them would be 14 times four, 1656. And I'm getting something very different than what Justine had written up here. I'm noticing that. So here, how does your answer compare? My answer is larger, 56, hers is 32. So how can we rewrite what she did with parentheses so that I'll make sure that I get my answer correct? Where is it that Justine needs parentheses in this problem. We need to have our parentheses around what we found just like we did. We figured out one bracelet and once we figure out one we can multiply that times four. So do you see how different our answers will be if we, um, if we don't follow the order of operations correctly or if we don't have it written out correctly. Because 32 is a lot less than 56. All right, let's turn the page. Mr. Finn makes gift boxes with four green bracelets, one gold bracelet, and one necklace. So in his gift box, you get four green bracelets, a gold bracelet, and a necklace. Each bracelet costs $2, and each necklace costs 5 He has 90 to spend on gift boxes. 
how can you model the number of boxes Mr. Finn can make using a, an expression? So this breaks it down for us. Parentheses. Write an expression in parentheses to represent the total number of bracelets in one gift box. Okay? So remember, he has four green bracelets. And each bracelet costs $2 to make. And he also has a gold bracelet. So we have four green, one gold. So we'd write four plus one. Sometimes we see brackets or braces, which is a, another form of parentheses. We really don't see them very much. So if you see um, brackets, they look like parentheses, but they're more solid or square-like. So let's write an expression in brackets to represent the total cost of bracelets in one box. So you would use this if you're still wanting to keep this stuff together. So we know that one box has four green bracelets and one gold and we know that they each cost two dollars to make. So when we do this, this helps us to keep the four plus one separate than the two, but we want all this to stay together. So that's why you may see more um, of these marks, more of these symbols couldn't think of the word. All right, then you might also see braces, which are kind of fun to draw, kind of look like that. Write an expression to represent the total cost of bracelets and the necklace. So if we keep on doing that, we know that it costs $2 to make our bracelets and we've got one necklace that costs $5 because we're trying to represent the total cost. So we have five bracelets times two, and we have one necklace, so that's just $5. So write and evaluate an expression to show how many gift boxes Mr. Finn could make with $90. So again, we've got our two, four, one, five, but here, remember, he's got $90. So I'm going to evaluate and say, okay, let's work this out. I like to rewrite it. And this will help you kind of see what it looks like. Okay, anytime I see a problem like this, I always say, work from the inside out. So, I'm going to rewrite 90 because this is not in anything. It's going to be the last thing I do. Two times, let's do our parentheses. Four plus one is five. I'm going to keep that there. Plus five. And I just, anything I haven't used, I don't take away yet. See how I only solved four plus one? So I brought that down. So next, I'm going to solve this. 90... 2 times 5 <clears throat> is 10 plus 5. Okay? 90 is still on the outside. I know 10 plus 5 is 15. And so now I'm left with 90 divided by 15. So it's costing me $15 to make one gift box. So if I take 90, how much money he has, and I divide it into 15, that's going to tell me how many I can make. So it's like how many $15 are in 90. So we can solve it right over here. We know our 15s. My 15s I get help because of, thinking of the clock, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. I know it goes in there six times exactly. So Mr. Finn can make six boxes. And we will keep doing some problems like this. But my advice to you is write it out. 
mark out what you're solving each time and then continue working. That's going to help you stay on track. All right, let's go down to um, these at the bottom. We can get some good practice right here. Now, it says use parentheses to rewrite the expression to have the given value. We're going to see a lot of problems like this. So for this one, they want the answer to be nine. You need to add parentheses to make sure your answer is nine. So this is a little bit of guessing and checking. Um, so let's just see if we put them here at the beginning. This is seven and the five. And I'm gonna use a pencil so I can erase. So if I do it like this, that's gonna be 35 minus 4 plus 2. And then I only have adding and subtracting left, so I'm going to do that from left to right. 35 minus 4 is 31 plus 2, and that's 33. That does not give me my 9. And you might find that it's better to have a piece of paper on the side. I might grab my dry erase board to do with this. So we're still working on number four. We put parentheses around the seven and the five and that didn't work. So maybe let's do them around the five and the four. So that would mean that I do my five minus four first and I get one and then I'll add my two. See how I didn't leave anything out that I haven't used? Then I would multiply next and get seven plus two, which gives me nine. And look, we want our value to be nine. So I had to do a little bit of work, but it didn't take me long to figure out where to put those parentheses. We see how I did that? Let's do the same thing with number five. So I'm going to write the problem out. Eight, I'm going to do my board long ways. Eight plus twelve divided by four plus two. And it's up to you what you do to try and solve it. But we want our answer to be 10. So I'm going to put that over here in the corner of my board so I know it needs to be 10. And I'm probably just going to start at the beginning and try that. 8 plus 12 would be 20 divided by 4 plus 2. And then 20, I would do dividing before adding. So 20 divided by 4 is 5 and 5 plus 2 is 7. That does not give me my 10. Oops, I'm sorry, you couldn't see all that. So, that's not the answer. So let's rewrite it and try another way. 8 plus 12 divided by 4 plus 2, okay? I want to get the answer 10, so maybe I can put my parentheses around these two numbers. 8 plus, I know I do parentheses first. 12 divided by 4 is 3 plus 2. Then I would add 8 plus 3 is 11 plus 2. 11 plus 2 is 13. That did not give me my answer of 10, so that's not correct. 8 plus 12 divided by 4 plus 2. Alright, it must be these two then. So, 8 plus 12 divided by, I know I do my parentheses first, so that's 6. Next, I know that I divide, and I'd have 8 plus 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 8 plus 2 does give me 10. So sometimes you're going to have to try a little bit. But the good thing is this isn't really hard, big, tricky numbers. So. For this answer, we just figured out we put the parentheses around those two. Let's do one more like this, and then we'll be done with this part. It says 2 plus 6 times 5 minus 4. And they want the answer to be 36. Make sure I read that right. 
Okay. I like to just start at the beginning. Let's try that. So if we do that, parentheses is first, 2 plus 6 is 8, and 8 times 5 minus 4 is less. I have multiplying and subtracting, so I know I multiply next. That's 40 minus 4, and that answer is 36. All right, so that one worked the first time. So nice. All right. So that's how we do that. Um, just remember that parentheses are very important because they tell you what to do first. They tell you what to keep together. So if you're ever working out a problem and something needs to be separated or not mixed up with anything else, you put those parentheses around it. That's the purpose of them and it keeps them together. All right, do your best.